collagen fibers and water as well. Now there are also a variety of cells that are found within bone. And if you want to kind of take a look at the different types of cells that we find in bone, there are three major cell types that I want to mention. There are what are called osteoblasts. All right, osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. Osteoblast, osteocyte, osteoclast. All right, now these are the three major types of, uh, like I said, cells you find in bone. All right, now, basically, osteocytes, you know, what osteocytes, what these are, these are just the the cells that you find sitting within the bone tissue. Now remember we took a look at compact bone in another, in another video as well in the histology of it. So remember compact bone, you find these haversian canal networks, all right? You find these, what you see is you see these hollow canals within the compact bone and then you see these cells, you know, if you look at it under a microscope, that kind of surround these canals. All right, and basically where you find, you know, one canal and the and the surrounding cells around there, remember, that's what we call an osteon, the functional unit of bone. Okay, the functional unit of bone. Now, remember within that central canal, there's typically two blood vessels, an artery and a vein, and a nerve. Okay, so you've got arteries, so you've got an artery of a vein and a nerve. Okay, so you're delivering blood to the bone. You're carrying away, you know, waste products from the bone, and you've got nerves to regulate the activity of the bone. All right. Now, the cells that are surrounding here, these osteocytes, these are constantly maintaining the extracellular matrix of the bone itself. All right. These osteocytes are constantly removing, you know, they're constantly removing proteins and, and adding proteins. All right. You know, as proteins break down, you're going to have to put some new ones in there. All right, so so that's all they do. They just sit there and they maintain the protein and the mineral content of this. So these are just functional cells that are surrounded by the extracellular matrix. Now these osteoblasts, all right, osteoblasts. What these do? These are designed to produce new bone tissue. All right, osteoblasts produce new bone tissue, and these are derivatives from cells that are called osteogenic or osteogenitor cells. Okay, remember osteo meaning bone, genesis means to create. Okay, and so basically these are cells that you find that are there to create new bone tissue. All right, and basically what the, you know, so you've got the osteocytes that are constantly playing a role in the remodeling process of bone. When I say remodeling, I mean bone, you know, we're constantly adding and taking away layers of tissue and bone. All right, so, there's, so these osteocytes are stripping away proteins, they're adding proteins, they're helping to maintain the mineral environment, all right? Now, osteoblasts, you know, what happens, these are, these are, these come from these osteogenic cells, and remember, osteogenic cells, these are stem cells. These are stem cells you find within the bone, and when we hormonally activate these stem cells with the right chemical messages, um, you know, the, we will, these osteogenic cells will proliferate into osteoblasts. And then these osteoblasts are just going to sit there and squirt out a bunch of protein and salts. And what they're going to, and then what the, and then that all the, all those new protein and salts are just going to add on to the already existing bone. All right. So think of osteoblasts as undergoing a process called deposition. All right, they're depositing bone tissue. They're creating and adding new bone tissue. All right, and um, you know there are certain situations when we would need to do this. For example, you know if you exercise. All right, if you if you if you're a sedentary individual and you decide to get in shape or to stay active for whatever reason it may be. All right your bones are going to have to thicken in order to compensate for all the mechanical stress you're applying to the bone. All right? If they don't, they're just going to break because remember, 
muscles are attached to bone. All right, muscles are attached to bone via tendon. Muscles shorten when they contract, they pull on tendons, and they pull on bone tissue. All right, so the combination of if your bones didn't thicken, all right, your 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 muscles are just going to be yanking on those bones, and that can potentially weaken them as they pull on the matrix and they're pulling the tissues apart. But even but even worse than that is you got you have to remember most exercises are impact type exercises. You know where you're where you're applying force. You know like running or playing basketball. I mean sure there's low impact exercises like swimming and cycling. All right, but your bones are still going to thicken. All right, even when you're doing that because of the force that muscles are applying on them. But if you decide to, let's say you decide to take up running, all right, you know the muscles of your I'm sorry, the bones of your ankle and the you know your tibia, your shin bone, are going to have to get really thick. They're going to have to thicken even more because of all the pounding that's going on. All right, and that's deposition where we activate osteoblasts to basically build up bone tissue. Right, and the hormones we we um, we do this with are calcitriol. Okay, calcitriol is basically the hormonally active form of vitamin D. Right, the hormonally active form of vitamin D. Um, calcitonin isn't really used much in adults. It's used a lot in kids. It does help promote bone density. Um, another common hormone that promotes this is estrogen. All right, estrogen is very important for this. Excuse me. Uh, you know, because you know you hear about estrogen a lot when you're talking about menopause. All right, estrogen. You know, the exact mechanics of this isn't well understood, but estrogen, you know, helps to promote bone deposition to maintain bone mass. That's why when women undergo menopause, that I mean, you know, the, their bones get, you know, saw, you know, brittle to the point where they break, osteoporosis. Because as those levels go down, their bone mass is also going to go down as well. All right. Um, and the opposite of this would then be osteoclasts. Okay, think of osteoclasts as cells that are designed to break down bone tissue. Okay, these are very big cells. These are very big multinucleated cells um, that basically... Are, these come from actually they have stem cells in the bone marrow that we use to produce blood. The stem cells that we use to produce monocytes, which are basically macrophages circulating in blood. All right, and in the right chemical environment, you know that you know you know with the influence of the hormone parathyroid hormone PPH, you know we will activate osteoclasts. All right, and there are certain situations where we need to break down bone tissue, like if our you know mainly if our blood calcium levels get too low. All right, you know this. I mean, most of the calcium and most minerals in the human body are found in bone. So if we become deficient in them, why not pull it out of there? It's a reserve. It's a reservoir for them. But this is not a good long-term uh, mechanism to maintain because after a while, you'll just continue to break it. And you'll, if you over secrete parathyroid, your bones are going to get soft and soft and soft because what these osteoclasts do is they secrete. They basically produce hydrochloric acid, all right? You know, they secrete, hyd you know, they, they secrete hydrogen ions into the extracellular matrix, and then it just combines with chloride, you know, coming in from blood flow in the area, and then you produce this acid. And then this acid just basically strips away, um, you know, strips the minerals away from the proteins, all right? And then as you strip the minerals and the proteins apart, what you're left with are, you just, you're left with more collagen than you are this hydroxyapatite, this salt. And remember, we say collagen is what makes bones soft and flexible. We don't want bones to be too soft and flexible because they're going to break too easily. That's what happens when people have overactive parathyroid glands. It's called hyperparathyroidism. All right, or you're probably more familiar with it as brittle bone syndrome. Okay, and you know that's a, that's a big risk if you break bones because if you break a bone, just you know if you break a bone right, you know if you have a nice compound fracture and that you know that bone may rip a you know rip surrounding tissues, may may rip a big artery. All right, you may you know that's not good news. Okay, so osteoclasts are designed to break down bone tissue. Now, now the combination of all of this activity, of all this cellular activity that we just described, is what's referred to as where is this remodeling. Okay, remodeling. Like I said, remodeling is basically the process your bones are going through 
on a day-to-day -day basis where they're either adding tissue, to, where, they're, where, they're, where they're maintaining and adding bone tissue, or we're stripping away bone tissue. And basically, how much remodeling takes place depends on our physical activity, how much physical force you're applying to bones. All right, because like I said, you know, if you're more inactive, you, you know, let's say you're an athlete, you decide to become inactive, all right, you know, you, you, you decide to start taking on a sedentary lifestyle, your bone mass is gonna go down. Okay, you know, one, because you're not using those muscles as much and you're not stressing the bones and you're not, you know, having the impact on the bones, the physical impact on the bones like you used to. All right, so you're going to strip away more bone tissue. Now, vice versa, like I mentioned earlier in the example, if you're exercising, you're an active individual, you're going to remodel bones to make them more fit. All right, so, so keep that in mind, that that is, that that is the biggest factor that plays into remodeling is physical force, how much do you physically stress your bones, okay? The more you physically stress the bones, the thicker they're going to have to be to compensate to handle that stress, and vice versa if you don't, all right? And then remodeling can also be influenced, you know, hormonally, like I mentioned earlier, by calcitriol and calcitonin, uh, or uh, oppositely by parathyroid hormone. Um, you know, we can squirt out these hormones to either promote bone density deposition, or uh, to strip away bone tissue, which is what we call resorption. Okay, but in the end, that's basically what bones are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, we're using these osteocytes, these osteoclasts and osteoblasts to maintain bone, the strength and flexibility of bone by maintaining the environment of the extracellular matrix, by making sure that there's a good, there's a right combination of collagen and hydroxyapatite calcium salts to help us meet our daily needs depending on how much physical force we're applying to our bones. Like I said, the more active we are, the thicker the bones, the less active we are, the thinner the bones. All right, so I hope this helped bring a better understanding of the chemical composition of bones and the basics of the remodeling.